Hello guys, welcome to another video of Car Copenhagen. Today I got the all new Hyundai Kona electric for you and it's from 2024. In this video I'll go deep into this car to find out what is good about it and what is not so good so you can make an informed decision. So without a further ado, let's jump into it. By the way, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do so because we got many more content like this coming up soon in this channel. Anyway, let's jump into the styling now. Dynamic and funky headlights from the side adds another dimension to the design line. It's very innovative the way they have integrated the long horizontal LED pixel to the front. The sharp diagonal line continues from spoiler to the side of the car, which remain as a signature line to the Kona design. For a fun fact, this Kona is the first car started as electric in the Kona family. Its unique and aerodynamic look makes it quite distinctive and modernistic. In the back, this Kona is very elegant with LED pixel lights. Although these LED pixels are inspired from Ionic 5 and Ionic 6, it looks quite natural in this Kona electric. Let's check if this modernistic unique look are continuing inside of the car as well. Well, as soon as I come and sit inside this cabin, I am greeted with this sophisticated interior cabin. It's looking really nice and premium, very unlike the previous Kona. When it comes to adjustment, there is plenty of adjustment for you in terms of steering wheel and also in terms of seat. This particular car comes with automatic seat adjustment, which means if you set all your details in the profile, it will set it up for you. The interior looks rather nice and premium. When it comes to build quality, it could improve a lot with a lot of soft touch material. However, it's not the case. They use a lot of hard plastic here and there, but they are no way in bad quality. One thing I really like about this car is there is not many places you can put your fingerprints on. So less things to maintain. When it comes to steering wheel, it feels pretty decent and comfortable to hold with lots of adjustment here and there. In this particular model, they have introduced regen braking system, which means you can adjust your regenerative braking system while driving this car. Otherwise, this cabin is fairly practical with lots of storage. In the door bin, you can hold a big bottle. And also in the front, you have two convertible cup holders. This can work as a cup holder when you need. Otherwise, it works as a simply storage. The armrest is also in very comfortable position with convertible storage here also. They put a tray here for some coins or something, but if you don't need, you can just take it off and then you have the whole storage. However, it's not fully closed, which means if you put a lot of items here, it looks like a mess. And if there are coins and keyrings and stuff like this, it will wrestle around while you drive. So that's something to think about. If you're not used to with one screen that controls the whole car, don't worry, this car got you covered. They have put almost all the buttons that you're gonna need to control this car as well as they have put all the function in the touch screen. Let's bring me to the infotainment system, a curved 12.3 inch display that house both driver's display and center console. This screen is highly responsive and sharp. Although the screen is full of tech features, the software designed in very simple manner, so everybody can be at ease while using. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto comes as standard. So you can just replicate your phone screen here. While driving, it's also possible to navigate the screen with buttons if that's what you wish for. It also offers ambient lighting and sounds to enhance driving experience. In terms of connectivity, you have two USB-C port in the front and one 12 volt socket as well. Also, you will find a wireless charging pad for your phone in the front. You get the good command of the visibility because of the high rear seats and also wide door mirror helps a lot to get you the better visibility. All in all, it looks really good and premium sitting in this car. Now it's time to check the back. Well, sitting in the back seems really comfortable, especially the seats. 
They are very soft and cushiony. The next important thing in the back is the space. Well, I'm five feet seven, and if you look, I set the driver's seat according to my driving position, and I still have loads of legroom. I'm not sure if you can see it properly. I have loads of legroom left, also a lot of headrooms. Not only that, the seats are raised quite high, which means under the seats, I have a lot of space to put my feet. And so I can recline a lot. And that is bound to ensure comfort in the long journeys. I really, really like sitting back in this car. We have the nice armrest here where you can naturally put your arm like that. Or if you wish, there's a door handle like this. Sitting in the back of this car feels all natural and relaxing. And all the door handles and controls are positioned in a logical way. However, when it comes to storage in the back, it lack a bit because the door bin are not particularly suited for long bottle like this. You can still put it, but you have to struggle a bit. Other than that, they have put seat pocket behind the driver's seat, which means you can put small items like your phones and iPad while it's charging. By the way, that brings me to the connectivity in the back. It offers you two USB-C port in the back and also a three pin socket. I'm not sure what that for, but that certainly give you access to the power stored in the battery in the car. Other than that, you have the air vent to give you nice cool or hot air, depending on what you want. To enhance its practicality, they have really thought about it. I'm surprised to find an armrest here in this car that not only add the practicality in the car, but also gives you feeling of luxury. The material quality in the armrest, it's really good. But what is awesome though, they managed to put a through loading, which means if you ever have to carry long item for your family or going somewhere special, you can always do that. And that makes this car really, really practical when it comes to a family car. You get lots of natural light and air coming into the cabin and it doesn't feel like small compact SUV in any way. Anyway, that's enough from the back. Let's check out the boot to see if this matching the practicality in this car. Well, from the very first of the design, it was meant to offer a practical boot. In fact, it's 30% larger than its previous model. Currently, it's offering 466 liters of cargo space with lots of practical tethering points here and there. At the same time, it offers underflow storage. Not only that, they have created a smart way of storing the parcel shelf. Finally, a thorough consideration is also given for soft closing of the door. By the way, when rear seat folded, it gives the cargo space of 1300 liters. However, these exposed seat belts can cause an issue with loaded items as they don't have any place to hide. Finally, you can choose the option to close the boot before go for driving. Well, enough of talking, now it's time to hit the road. The seat and the driving position make the driving really comfortable. Well, as soon as you sit in this driving position, you're really amazed by the commanding view it gets to you. Thankfully, I'm driving in a road where the road construction is happening. That means I get to experience a lot of bumps and holes, and this car is doing really good. All the imperfections in the road seems comfortable and cushiony. One thing I have noticed though, as soon as you take your feet off from the brake, it gives a kind of <laughs> silly noise. All the safety and security system in this car working pretty good because I'm driving through a very narrow road, especially when the road constructions are going on. All the safety features are giving me all sort of indications. I really like that. Now I'm taking the car into the motorway to see how the acceleration works in this car. When it comes to driving in the motorway, it gives adequate amount of speed. The engine is pretty punchy. I don't feel any sort of lag in the performance. One thing I noticed though, when I start the wiper, it did not really make any noise. When it comes to experiencing the drive of this car, it's, it's, it's mostly lying towards the traditional car. Apart from no engine noise, everything else is similar to driving a combustion engine car. The engine feels pretty punchy in the city and also in the motorway. However, it's not near to a performance car. So don't expect to be it. This car is made to give you a very comfortable ride, not a performance ride. When it comes to coming off from the motorway, 
it handles the braking smoothly and regenerative braking system comes with an adjustment which means you can set up the amount of regen brake you need to match your driving styles as soon as you come to the normal road it indicates to you about the road speed limit which helps you to be safer on the road when it comes to cabin insulation and road noise this car is doing the job really really well i mean you don't get to hear a lot of road noise and also other traffic passing by but it's not all quiet though what i'm trying to say is highly negligible especially when you play some music and radio stuff like that another interesting thing when i set my destination in the navigation i can also see a direction on my driver's display on top this car is highly maneuverable especially in the narrow road well i try to make a three knot turn in this car let's see That was easy. Driving in this car feels pretty natural and you don't need to go through a learning cycle on this car. One thing I'm missing though, this armrest is fixed to one position which means it's not adjustable in terms of height and the position. Which means with your driving position, if this armrest is not suitable, you have to rest your arm like this entire journey and you are not comfortable. In terms of looking out for cyclists, this car provides a very excellent view and also the rear visibility is amazing which means you are covered in most situations when it comes to handling the real bumps this car makes you feel really comfortable i have not been driven a better suspension car like this one in long time all in all what i can say this car is very comfortable to drive which handles the bumps and holes pretty good with a very comfortable suspension the seat is very comfortable and offers a very good sitting position which means if you have to take a long drive with this car it could be absolutely possible i mean i'm trying hard to find something that i really don't like about this car but it's really 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 difficult well, the way this car is ticking all the box, I got a feeling it will be really, really all around family car and it will be loved by many drivers. When it comes to battery, it offers two variants. Standard one is 48.4 kilowatt hour with 156 brake horsepower and can give 377 kilometer on single charge. On the other hand, the extended range battery comes with 65.4 kilowatt hour in size, which can produce 217 brake horsepower and can go up to 512 kilometers. The claimed acceleration from 0 to 100 kilometer is done in 7.8 seconds. However, the point to be noted that the top acceleration it's claiming can only be achieved with 17 inch alloy with first charging capabilities it can do 10 to 80 percent in 41 minutes this is actually a bit below standard compared to what other rivals are offering however at home or at standard public charging stations it takes 5 hours and 6.5 hours accordingly but what is interesting though it can add 114 kilometers and 162 kilometers of range accordingly by charging only for 15 minutes. This Kona Electric starts on the pricier side compared to regular combustion and hybrid Kona. It starts from 299,000 Danish crown in Denmark and goes up to 369,000 Danish crown. When available in UK, it will be starting from 35,000 pound and going up to 43,000 pound. In US, it will be from 33,000 US dollar going up to 42,000 USD. 
in Canadian, it will be starting around 40,000 and going up to 52,000 Canadian dollars. However, all these figures are approx because they are not available in the market of UK, US and Canada. Well, that brings me to the conclusion of this video. All in all, what I really think this Hyundai Kona, it's a really competitive choice because it's going to serve equally well to comfort lovers and also tech lovers. However, one thing I'm not so sure of is the design work. I personally think it's a bit too much going on here with the design without being coherent. But in the good side, where it's smashing though, it's offering five years warranty with unlimited mileage. You can drive the car for five years without having to worry about mileage. I think that's just great. Finally, the extended size and smartly designed interior makes it really practical and compatible with the regular family usage. Therefore, I finally think if you're looking for a hassle-free driving experience for yourself and for the family, this car will make a perfect choice. All in all, I highly recommend to have a test drive on this car. Well, that's all from me for today. I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, please take care and drive safe.